What's happening everyone, Nick here from TV Box Top and welcome back to another Android TV Box review. Today's model is another recent release running on the all winner H618 quad core CPU on Android 12 operating system. This is the T95Z Plus and it's sold by the HK MLC brand on Amazon. This model runs on 4GB of RAM and 64GB of internal storage and it comes with a mini touchpad keyboard as an accessory. So to find out all there is to know about this box, stay tuned to my full reviews up next. So I'm back and let's take a look at what's in the box. You have the T95 Plus model itself. One infrared remote, one HDMI cable, a 5 volts 2 amps power adapter, a wireless mini keyboard and charging cable, a manual for the T95Z Plus, and a manual for the wireless mini touchpad keyboard. So, the design of this model is one we have not seen in a long time since the launch of their first model back in 2016, which was also called the T95Z Plus. It adopts a hexagon shape with a honeycomb pattern to the top. For input output, it has one HDMI port, one AV port, its DC power input, one USB 2.0 port, one RJ45 Ethernet LAN port, one optical audio port, another USB 2.0 port, and a micro SD card reader. At the front, it has an LED display. And below the box has four anti skid rubber pads and ventilation holes. So its startup process consists of a T95 Z Plus animation for a few seconds, then you're taken directly to its launcher. So this launcher is called the Soft Winner Launcher, and it has a very basic layout with these large highlighted icons. The next row is for some system tools to access apps such as Miracast and a one-click cleanup button. And the last row consists of shortcuts to its system settings. There is the option to change its wallpaper from a preloaded selection and you also have the option to use custom images. And this launcher does not feature a navigation bar or status bar. This firmware was built on the Android 12 SDK and here is its firmware build information. And it features 4K 2160p display up to 60Hz and this is true 60Hz as detected by my capture card. You get up to 10-bit color depth. It has HDR display with auto HDR feature. Under display formats, it shows that it has HDR10 and HLG and it does not support Dolby Vision or HDR10+. It has auto frame rate switching. You have text scaling. This can come in handy for viewing at further distances and for person with vision challenges. It has HDMI CC options, power key definition options, an app to control its LED lighting feature, and audio pass through and advanced surround sound audio options. Taking a look at its app section, these are what come pre-installed and I'll be testing this official Miracast feature in just a moment. But before I do, let's first take a look at its system and hardware information. So the manufacturer of this chipset is all winner and it has 4GB of DDR3 RAM and 64GB of internal storage. Its Bluetooth version is 5.0. Its CPU is the all-winner H618 and it's a quad-core Cortex A53 CPU clocked at 1.4 GHz configured in 32-bit mode which means it can only run 32-bit apps and games. Its low CPU clock speed is to curtail overheating which is a known all-winner issue. Its display is powered by the Mali G31 GPU with OpenGL version 3.2 support. It comes with dual band 2.4 plus 5 GHz Wi-Fi. Its operating system is Android 12 and it shows that the firmware is not rooted. Its GPU has a Vulkan support API version 1.1. Its temperature sensor is enabled and it shows that it idles around 67 degrees Celsius. Under codecs, it has decoders for the playback of 4K HDR videos but no AV1 decoder. There is also no surround sound audio decoders, so that will have to be done at the software level. And that's its system and hardware information. 
So let's get the obvious out of the way. This box is not Google certified with only wide vinyl level 3 with no HDCP protection and it also shows that the box is not rooted. What this simply means is that paid subscription services such as Netflix, Disney Plus and Amazon Prime Video will be restricted to 480p resolution even if you have an HD account. For alternative sources of streaming, you can install the latest version of the Kodi Media Player and install your third-party add-ons. And you can also install streaming APKs. However, the stock remote cannot navigate to their menus, you would have to use the included wireless mini touchpad keyboard or another wireless air mouse. For watching YouTube videos, you can install the Android TV version or you can install the mobile version from the Play Store. However, it plays best at 1440p resolution as 4K 2160p freezes up a lot. It comes with the official version of Miracast that mirrors your mobile devices in HD quality. This feature works without issues which is quite surprising because I've seen it fail so many times in these boxes. So here I'm mirroring my Android cell phone in HD without issues. For customizing your launcher and the navigation experience, I installed the menu button navigation bar. However, due to no root access, the recent apps feature is not working. So if your box does not have a navigation bar, you can view my tutorial in the description below this video. And as mentioned, you can change its wallpaper from a selection of pre-installed ones and it has the option to use a custom image. However, when I attempted to read the images from external storage, it does not read. For alternative launchers, you can install your favorite alternative launchers. However, there's a weird scenario where when you install an alternative launcher, there's no way for you to switch between launchers, not even from the navigation bar. The good news is, with your alternative launcher, you can use custom wallpapers or live wallpapers. I'll now play some 4K HDR videos and I'll be testing for HDR and HLG HDR video playback. This box does not support the AV1 format so I won't be playing that video. And only a win for Barca would be enough because it would give them the same number of points as Atletico. But the head-to-head -head goal difference is what counts in the case. So this test shows that it has 4K HDR video playback, however I did not get HLG HDR. For surround sound audio, we have already seen that it does not come with any hardware decoders. So let's see what software decoders we can get via the MX player. This is Dolby Atmos. 
the world's first object-based cinematic audio. With powerful moving audio that transcends from channels to moving around you with pinpoint accuracy. So via software decoding, it can play Dolby Atmos, Dolby Digital Plus and DTS Neural X. It cannot output Dolby Surround, DTS X, DTS HD Master Audio or Dolby True HD. So I connected my gamepad via Bluetooth and its Bluetooth 5.0 connection is stable and I will now use it to play an Android game to test for graphics rendering and for overheating. Easy prey. So the game plays best at medium graphics settings as any higher results in throttling. The temperature of its CPU rose into the 80s during gameplay, so it's recommended that you use a cooling fan. When you apply a cooling fan, temperatures drop into the low 70s. Let's now take a look at its benchmarks, starting with its RAM copy speed and its internal storage read and write speeds. Its RAM copy speed is 2,772 megabytes per second. Its internal storage has a read speed of 149 megabytes per second and a write speed of 139. Next, its internet speed tests. Based on my network speed of 154 megabits per second, neither of its Wi-Fi bands or its LAN port could achieve the maximum speed of my network. The 5 GHz band reached 56%. The 2.4 GHz band reached 39% and the LAN port, which is not a gigabit LAN port, reached 61%. Its CPU, in benchmarking its single-core and multi-core performance, it got a score of 103 single-core and a 339 multi-core in the Geekbench 5 CPU benchmark. In benchmarking the performance of its GPU with a Vulkan support, I got a score of 128 in the Wild Life test and 265 in the Slingshot Extreme test. And in the Antutu benchmark, it scored 69,262. So with these benchmarks, it placed at number 84 with a 2 star rating based on my user experience. And to view this chart, see the link in the description below this video. In summary, the new T95Z Plus has the same performance as those we have seen running the all-winner H618 chipset thus far. It's a great budget option for streaming movies and TV shows, but not so much for gaming. If you do decide to game on it, please apply a cooling fan for safety. And that my friends concludes this review. If you are interested in this model, you can get it at a reasonable price using the link in the description below this video. Thanks for watching. Give this video the thumbs up if the information contained was of value. If this is the first time viewing, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring that notifications bell to support this channel and to be notified each time I release a new video or decide to do a giveaway. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.